You finally learned how to configure VLANs on a switch, and that's good. But none of them will be able to communicate with each other without this one crucial configuration. This crucial configuration is router on a stick. In this video, I'm going to explain what router on a stick is and how to configure it on your network. So let's talk about what is router on a stick. Imagine you have a layer two switch. All the devices are connected to it properly and you've configured VLANs on it to segment the network. And then you try to ping from one PC in VLAN 10 to another PC in VLAN 20. Then you realize that the pings fail. This is because by default, VLANs are not able to communicate between one another. Because you have to remember that each VLAN is an individual LAN. And if you have two different LANs and only one switch, they won't be able to communicate with each other. You need some kind of layer two device, like either a layer three switch or a router to solve this issue. So there are two options to fix this. One is by using SVIs on a layer three switch. This is assuming you have a layer three switch. And I went over this in my previous video. And the second is router on a stick. So let's imagine this is our network. We have a layer two switch. We have one PC in VLAN 10 and we have another PC in VLAN 20. So when PC one tries to send a ping to PC two, the PC will first look at where does it want to send the ping to first. So when PC one sends a ping, it's going to be like ping 192.168.20.3. Let's say PC two's IP address is this. When PC one is examining this command, it'll realize that 192.168.20.3 is not in the same network as the one that I'm in, which is 192.168.10.0. So by default, it'll try to send it to the default gateway. And right now, we actually don't even have a default gateway. So this ping will just be dropped instantly. The PC will not even send it. It won't even send it to the switch. It'll just drop it because it doesn't have a default gateway to send it to. And now this is what router on a stick looks like. You can see why it's called router on a stick because it's literally one stick, one ethernet cable connected from the switch to the router. So now, if we configure router on a stick properly, if we send this ping, we're gonna configure PC1 to a default gateway in router one. So when we send this ping, the PC will realize, oh, this is in a different network than I'm in. So I'm gonna send it to my default gateway. It's gonna send it to the switch first. Then the switch is gonna send it to the router because that's where the default gateway of VLAN 10 is. The router will look at its routing table to see if it knows where this IP address is. And it's gonna be like, oh shoot, yes, I do know where this IP address is. So it's gonna send it back to switch one and then it's gonna switch one is gonna send it to PC2. So that's how the routing using router on a stick will look like in a network. So this is what router on a stick will look like on a real device. If we pretend that this is our router, we're going to have literally one cable connected from the switch to our router. And this is the stick. This is the router on the stick that we're talking about. And then we're gonna have a bunch of other ethernet cables. Imagine a bunch of ethernet cables here connected to all the different PCs that uh, would normally connect to this switch. So as you can see, router on a stick is actually, it's pretty simple. It's a pretty simple concept once you understand VLANs and routing. So now let's learn how to configure router on a stick on these devices. So we're, actually, we're gonna use Package Tracer for this. <laughs> I tried to use my, my real switches, but they didn't, I don't think they allow um, something called sub interfaces, which is what router on a stick uses for the routers. So that's why we're using Packet Tracer in this lab. So first let's configure switch one. Enable configure terminal, change the host name. Let's name it switch one, set a password, enable secret epic password. So now that we've configured the host name and the password, let's configure the VLANs. Let's go VLAN 10. Let's name it HR, VLAN 20, and let's name it IT. And now let's assign some ports to the VLANs. Or now let's assign the VLANs to the ports. So int FA00, this is the one connected to VLAN 10. Int F00. Oh! Okay, so this one's actually FA01. Oops. And this one's FA02. <laughs> so let's configure int FA0 slash one. Switch port mode access. Switch port access. VLAN 10. Then let's go int FA02, switch port mode access, and same thing, switch port access, VLAN 20. So now if we do the command show VLAN brief, we'll be able to see that FA01 is in VLAN 10, FA02, FA02 is in VLAN 20. So now let's talk about this link the link between the switch and the router. In the previous videos, I've always talked about access ports, access ports on switches. The other type of port is called a trunk port. This is the port that we will configure between the switch and the router because a trunk port can carry multiple VLANs. And if you think about it, the link between the switch and the router will have to carry at least two VLANs. It'll have to carry 
at least VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. Because when VLAN 10 wants to send a ping to VLAN 20, wants to send this ping, first it'll send it to the router, right? But then on the way back, it's gonna be a VLAN 20 packet because it's destined for VLAN 20. So this link will have to carry VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. And I'll show you how to configure that here. So let's go to the interface, GI 0 slash 0 slash 0. Oh, it's just GI 0 0. What? Oopsies, it's this way. Oh my gosh, I just messed up the labels, oops. So let's do int GI 0 slash 1, and we can do switch port mode trunk instead of switch port mode access. To configure this trunk to allow specific VLANs, we can use the command switch port allowed VLAN, oh no, switch port trunk, sorry. Switch port trunk allowed VLAN 10, 20. Oh, 10, 20. What? 10, 20. Okay, there we go. There's no spaces in between anything. Now this tells us switch that this port will be a trunk port and allow VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. If another random VLAN tries to come like VLAN 67 and then it wants to send traffic over that trunk, it will not, the switch won't allow it because it's not explicitly allowed on that trunk. So the configuration of the switch is done. We've configured the two access ports and the one trunk port to allow VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. So now let's configure the router. Enable conf t hostname r1. And the port that we're connected to on the router is int g0000. We can go no shut. On routers, ports are actually shut down by default. So you have to use the command no shutdown to enable them. And now we can talk about something interesting called sub interfaces. So when we look at our topology, we notice that since it's called a router on a stick, there's literally only one stick, one ethernet cable going from switch one to R1, which means that there's only one interface that switch one is connected to on R1. It's GI000. But how can we route multiple VLANs using one interface? This is where sub interfaces come in. To configure a sub interface, you just do interface uh, GI 0 slash 0 slash 0, and you do point 0.1. I'm doing point 0.1 here, but you can do whatever one you want. I'm doing point, actually, let's do point 0.10, so it's just VLAN 10. And now you have a router sub interface. Notice that it says router sub interface. That's pretty cool. And within this sub interface, the command that's most important right now is this encapsulation command encapsulation dot one Q and then you choose the VLAN that you want this sub interface to correspond to encapsulation dot one Q 10 because we're doing VLAN 10 right and then we can assign an IP address to this IP add 192.168.10.1 this is just the default gateway this is what we want the sub interfaces IP address to be and now we can do the same thing for VLAN 20 int gi 0 slash 0 slash 0 0.20 encapsulation.1q20, because VLAN 20, and IP add 192.168.20.1.205.205.255.0. Now that we have our router, it has two sub interfaces within this interface, GI000, and this is what will allow this router to route between the two VLANs. So now let's configure these PCs, IP address, and the default gateway is this. And now let's configure PC2, 192.168.20.3. I'm just using three, I don't know why, it's just a random number. 192.168.20.1, this is the default gateway. This is what we configured on the router. So if we try to ping 192.168.20.3, we should be able to ping. There we go, we're able to ping. And something cool about Packet Tracer is we can go to simulation mode. So let's ping. So we can see that PC1 created a ping. We press next. It'll send it to switch one. Then it sends it to the router. Then the router is gonna do some routing. It's gonna find out where this destination should go to. It's gonna send it back to the switch and it's gonna send it to PC2. And then PC2 is gonna do the same thing, send it back for to reply to the ping. So this is router on a stick. It's relatively simple. It's a really important topic for CCNA. I don't know if it's used that, that much anymore in the real world. I think layer three switches are just taking over because of how much better they are. If you wanna see how to configure the basic configurations of a switch, including SVIs and IP addresses, then you can click the video that's on the screen right now, 
or you can subscribe, which is the other link on this video right now. Let me know what other videos you guys want me to do in the comments and uh, I'll see you guys next time.